Hello. Welcome back. Gracie is behind me. She is our watchdog. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Tworkowski, and this is Twaloha at Home. I am the founder of To Write Love on Her Arms, coming to you on behalf of our team. Still spread out all over, still working from home. Uh, most people are in Florida. I am in East Nashville, Tennessee. And we've been doing these to Aloha at Home Instagram Lives for a couple months now. And last week, uh, we kind of switched gears and we called it Listening to Black Voices. And we had two great guests in, uh, in Chris and Joelle, two new friends to the organization. And this week, we're gonna hear from two friends that we've known for a while. Uh, personal friends of mine and supporters of the organization for years now. So we're excited to have Megalyn Echikin Woke back on and then Carlos Whitaker uh, will be joining us as well. Megalyn is in Los Angeles. Carlos uh, is here in Nashville, a few miles away. And so I'm actually, I meant to do this a second ago. I'm gonna turn off the comments and that is just so that we can truly live out listening to black voices. And uh, visually it makes for a better experience just because you can see our guest. Uh, the one exception, if you have a question, we would love to invite your question. So you can submit a question either for Megalyn or for Carlos at the bottom of the screen using the question mark icon. Um, and I wanna mention two quick things before we bring on Megalyn. Last week, we shared two extensive lists uh, that we are proud of. And the first of those is a list of mental health resources created for and by the black community. Sorry, the black community. Um, we know that black lives matter. We believe that black lives matter. And with that, we believe that black mental health matters. The mental health of people of color matters. And so we were excited to put together a list of uh, people within the black community meeting mental health needs. If you have a question about that, or if you are in need of financial assistance, you can email findhelp at twaloha.com, findhelp at twaloha.com. And the second thing that went up back on Thursday uh, is a list that we created for uh, non-black individuals. And this is a list for people who want to learn about and practice anti-racism. Um, so we know that people are in different circumstances, different situations, different backgrounds right now. And we want to do our best uh, to show up for both groups um, and for people in between. And so we're really proud and we're excited to be able to share those resources you can find those on our website, again, twaloha.com. And with that, I'm gonna bring on Megalyn. She should be joining us in a second. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, it's good to see you. I saw you a moment ago. Yes. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for, thank you for coming back. Um, so I guess we talked to you just probably around three weeks ago. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously a lot has happened since then. So I might start with a really broad question and, and let you kind of take it where you want. But I wonder what, what the last few weeks have been like for you, what you've been processing and, and also how you've been spending your time? Um, well, I think it's safe to say the last three weeks have been pretty intense for everybody. Um, it's a lot to process. Um, I shared with you earlier, you know, this, this type of thing, the thing that happened with George Floyd 
has been going on for a long time. So, you know, the death of George Floyd for the black community is, is one of many, you know, kind of traumas like that, that have, that have happened for years. So, um, so while it's had this huge impact on the world, even it is still definitely a trauma and it's definitely something that, um, that I am still, still processing as, as I am still processing all, all of those that have happened over the years. It's been, it's been a lot. Um, and what I try to remind white allies is like, you know, this, that, this, this feeling that you have, this, the, the rage, the anger, the confusion, the, the, the fatigue and all of that stuff has, has been plaguing black Americans for, you know, <laughs> many, many years. Um, and so it's definitely something that I, once, once we have space, because there's so much happening, you know, and there's just so much to do yeah. that we definitely take time to, um, to take care of our, our heads and our hearts because it is, 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 is really traumatic. Um, so yeah, so I've definitely still been processing it, but in the, but also I've been doing a lot of learning. I've been, you know, I just got off this amazing zoom call. Um, I've been on webinars and a lot of talking about what does deep on the police mean? What does changing, um, changing our carceral system mean, um, divesting from all of that stuff mean and what does public safety look like? So that has been really energizing and there's a lot of, a lot of hope there for me, so. Mm. Um, and I know you've been in the streets, you've been protesting as well. Um, yeah. I wonder if, do you mind sharing anything from that experience? Well, it's, it's, it's been really interesting from, you know, I, uh, the the death of George Floyd was actually super <laughs> intense for me because it was also my birthday. The day, let's see, he he died on the twenty fifth. Everyone heard about it on the twenty sixth. The twenty seventh, I went to my first protest, and my birthday's on the twenty eighth. And so, my head was like really i was really done in um but the first the first protest i went to on the 26th downtown la is a protest that actually happens every wednesday that black lives matter does every wednesday in front of the hall of justice to protest jackie lacy who is the current district attorney of la county and um and it was actually really powerful to see how it's grown from that day to now I went back down there yesterday last Wednesday and it's like hundreds of people I think it's it's died down from the week before where there's like thousands and thousands um but it really seems like there are everyone wants things to change and people are are tired of feeling like this nobody feels safe um and that there's a lot of support from at least in los angeles from the white community from all the communities and everyone's really listening which is which is really powerful because that's what's important right now um because most of the harm is inflicted on black communities you really have to listen to what their experiences are and go like okay you might not be able to relate but it's it's really real so um so yeah the streets have been insane and and, and then you know i went the, i went the wednesday and then the following saturday which was like memorial day or the week after memorial day that was when the violence started with the police and you know i'll say i've been to as many protests as i can was a, am able to attend um, and a lot of people have commented, you know, when I post footage about the protests, a lot of negative commenting about like, oh, you know, this is so disrespectful, the looting and the rioting and all that stuff. 
And, and to that I say, I, I haven't attended any riots. I have been to peaceful protests and demonstrations where the police incited violence against mm -hmm. civilians. And so, yeah, violence is wrong and there's no, it's completely unnecessary and it's illegal. And, um, and the mayor has not done anything to, was not doing anything to rein that in. And it's also kind of like the police making our point for us, like, you were, we are, we are civilians protesting something. We have every right to be here, a lawful assembly. And then they incite violence, which is like a form of punishment and control. And okay. it just, no, no, it's okay. Am I still there? Yeah, yeah, you're here. <laughs> Sorry, I have my on a social media like timer my my time limit for the yeah day. yeah oh. yeah <laughs> i've um, had that happen it's okay so anyway yeah um everything i've everything I've, I've attended has been so beautiful and the speeches have been so amazing and the energy has been so incredible so um of course we know that a, a lot of violence happened and a lot of looting and and bad stuff happened but that is that was never the intent, obviously. So to the people going like, fuck Black Lives Matter under your name, under that name, so much bad stuff happened. No, it didn't. That had nothing mm -hmm. to do with Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a movement and it's yeah. a people movement and it's about creating change within our communities that, and, and creating safe, a safe place, a, a public safety model that works for everybody. Um, and so that's what our demonstrations were about. So, um, so yeah, and I, and I encourage anyone, you know, to get out there if you can um, support the movement. Yeah. I want to get to what you've been learning and, and what you hope other people can learn and participate in. But as it relates to mental health and even specifically your mental health and your mm -hmm. self-care, um, I wonder how you've been able or have you been able to prioritize that in the midst of an incredibly unique, incredibly intense couple weeks. Yeah. Um, it was, it, that first week was pretty rough, I, I will say. Um, because, you know, for me personally, I've, I've been embroiled in this kind of stuff for, for a while. And it's really had a huge impact on my life. You know, Los Angeles, I've, I, basically grew up here in LA. I went to high school here and, um, and you know, the LA County court system and the cops have been a huge part of my life for a long time because of, you know, my family members being involved, being in the system. Yeah. Um, so, so the last week, you know, and so I, I have this drive to fight, to, to do something about it. And I think we all do, especially when you, you see this, and you hear people out in the streets and you're like, I gotta do something. Um, and, and you absolutely should. And I definitely have, but then I definitely kind of reached a point where I was like, okay, there's only so many Zooms I can do. There's only, there's only so many text threads I can be on there's only so much information I can take in at a time and still be effective. So I've definitely been turning off my socials for most of the day recently. Um, you know, I said yesterday I got home. I was just like, after call, after call, after thing, I was like, I'm just going to turn everything off and like do some gardening. <laughs> If you follow me uh, regularly, you know that I'm kind of a garden nerd. And so I, I gardened. I planted some plants. I dusted the leaves of my plants. <laughs> I parented my plants yesterday and it was very therapeutic. So little things like that. Um, last I've time we talked about dancing last time. So now we're talking oh, yeah. about gardening. Oh yeah, and then another thing I should mention, uh, another really therapeutic thing is just like creating art. I, I had the opportunity to, um, 
I have the privilege of working with this organization called Voices of a People's History. And um, they do these amazing events based on Howard Zinn's book, um, a people's history of the United States. And so they kind of have this um, more kind of academic educational book based off of that with a lot of um, performance pieces that they kind of, they do these events where they have actors, dancers, singers come and perform um, different music, speeches, things like that throughout history, different activists <laughs> history. And um, great. Crazy. Oh, see, she's getting. She's, hey, no. She wants to fight. Sorry. <laughs> um, being good. So they asked me to perform a piece, and yeah. I got to collaborate with my friend Ben Harper. He's playing. He accompanied me on this song, and so that's going live tomorrow at, for uh, Summer Stage Anywhere, which is um, which is something that um, I forget the park, but it's uh, I think it's in. Central Park okay. and um, because no, nothing can be live right now there are no concerts they're doing yeah. it online so um, so participating in that kind of stuff is so therapeutic for me singing dancing um, all of that stuff has actually you know because the thing I also like to bring up for people is like for all the people who are like oh you guys are just, you know, trying to start trouble, blah, 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 blah. I try to remind people, no, we don't want to be here. Like, I don't want, I don't really want to be doing this work. Like, I don't want to be out in the streets protesting. I would so much rather be on set right now. I would so much rather be in a recording booth in a, you know, dance studio or something like doing the stuff that I love, doing the stuff that I believe I was, I was born to do. My dream yes. when I was a little kid was not like, I want to be, you know, when I'm in the prime of my life and my artistic and, and my career, I want to be spending all of my time and energy trying to defund the police and trying to keep, make sure that my, me and my family can walk down the street and just live in the United States without the fear of, of being brutalized by the police or killed by the police or incarcerated. Um, and that's... That, you know, that's the reality that me and my family live in. So obviously I have to address it, but that's not like what I, I dreamed of doing sure. when I was a kid. This is not, we don't want to be here. Yeah. You know, I love, I love that speech that Killer Mike, you know, he opened that speech when he was talking to the people of, of Atlanta and he was sobbing and he was like, I don't want to be here. I didn't. I, I, none of this is, is, is making me happy at all right now. This is not, this is not where we want to be. It's really uh, about we ha having no other choice, feeling like you have yeah. no other choice. I don't feel like I do. Um, I want to remind people watching, we would love to get to a question or two from you guys. So if you have a question for Megalyn now or Carlos in a little while, you can submit. There's a question mark box at the bottom of your screen. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you've been learning? I know we, we touched earlier on some people may not even know what does it mean to defund the police? Does that mean we wouldn't have police? Um, right. So is there anything you want to share that, that you've been learning in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot happening at the speed of light. And I'll just say, with regard to defunding the police, that is, well, there's two different schools of thought. There are people who think, oh, we'll just defund the police, which means like scaling way back on their funding and having different forms of public safety so that people are not calling on the cops for every part of our lives, so mm -hmm. that the cops are not interacting with homeless people, with mentally ill people, with, um, domestic abuse issues they don't need to be the first responders to they don't they shouldn't be as big a part of our lives as they are um so creating new models for public safety that actually keeps us safe because mm -hmm. right now the police don't keep us safe the police um i mean the police especially like for los angeles county they they take up over half 
of the city's budget goes to the police. And yet, you know, Jackie Lacey has not held them accountable for the over 600 deaths that occurred at the hands of the cops, of, mm -hmm. at the hands of LAPD. Um, so, so things like that. So when you think of those numbers, you have to go, yeah, that's not public safety. Um, they beat the protesters, you know, it took a week of violence from the cops for them to kind of go like, and, and for, for everyone calling out the mayor to go like, this is insane. Like we were allowed to protest. All the violence was started by the cops. So, I mean, they're kind of like, like I said before, they're kind of proving our point for us because as you see, they are about punishment and control and, and it's not really about public safety and and they don't have they don't have the training they don't have the bandwidth to even address half of the things that they are called to do so there's that and but for me it doesn't end there i think um defunding the police is is on the road to abolishing is is on the road to abolishing the police and abolishing prisons and abolishing um, the way we, this punitive system that, that we've created that is really way more harmful than it is good. Um, so that's sort of what, what it means to me. And again, this is all, we don't, we've never done this before. So the other piece of it is like, we have to create it. We have to build this thing that we, that we want to see. Um, so that requires creativity and imagination. We have to imagine, okay, if someone is getting, if a wife is getting abused by her, is getting beat up by her husband, who should be called? Mm -hmm. And we have to create that type of system. If a homeless person is having a psychotic episode on the street, who should be called? It shouldn't be the police. Why, why homelessness shouldn't be a crime. Mm. Because right now it is, and being yeah. mentally ill shouldn't be a crime. If someone's having a, you know, if my brother is having a manic episode or a psychotic episode, and he's a danger to himself, the cops shouldn't be the first people I call. He shouldn't go to jail for that. Yeah. Um, and because that is where he will start to deteriorate and get zero care, get the opposite of what he needs so things like that we have to we have to build a new model of public safety hmm. and um it's totally doable because the system that we have now we completely created and imagined based on the needs of of what white men thought um how white men thought that they should protect their property and their meaning slaves um and how, you know, it's based on a system that is, it, that is informed by slavery and yeah. ownership of bodies and controlling bodies. So, and punishing people for things that you shouldn't be punished for. Sure. Um, so there's nothing restorative or rehabilitative about the system we have now uh, which is why I think it's so funny that all of these, you know, these jails are, they're called rehabilitation centers. Yeah. They're the opposite of that. Sure. <clears throat> um, I want to ask, I, I got to ask Joelle and Chris this earlier, but um, in the midst of so much pain, s such an intense yeah. couple weeks, I wonder, do you personally feel hopeful? Do you feel like, things can change? And do you feel like there's even evidence of positive change already? Yeah, there's a lot of evidence. Um, like I said, there's so much happening. I mean, things are developing by the hour. Um, and if you've been following along, you know, just in, in one or two weeks of demanding justice, the Minneapolis PD has said that they are going to start exploring disbanding their police force. Yeah. That's huge. And here in Los Angeles County, um, the mayor was going to allow an increase of funding to the Los Angeles Police Department of $150 million on top of 
the billions of dollars that they already have. Yeah. And he rescinded that. Mm -hmm. So the county of LA rescinded the increase of funding, which is just a tiny step. I mean, sure. we're talking really <laughs> defunding. Yeah. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. And that's really hopeful because it like, you know, it's only been three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so people are starting to really have the discussions and they're hard discussions. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's like this thing that we've only ever known the system that we have now. We've only ever known this punitive, harmful system. And so it's hard. It's like, you know, you have, you've been abused constantly. You don't know what not being abused is like. So we're going to discover it together, which I think is really, really hopeful. And it's, it's just so heartening to see everyone who's, who's getting involved and all the creativity around it. Um, and one of the things that one of the Black Lives Matters leaders always says, like, you have to remember, this is not a moment. This is a movement. This is yeah. just the beginning of something huge and beginning of something, hopefully, ultimately really healing for everybody involved, for all of the communities involved, which is, you know, the nation. Um, black, white, people of color, the LGBTQ community. This is, this is, this is major. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's scary and it's exciting at the same time, but that's what, you know, change usually is like that. Yeah. I wonder sort of a two part question to maybe end on. Um, what, what has, like what voices or organizations have been educating you, inspiring you, um, and if someone's watching and, and they feel like they sort of still don't know where to start or, or how they can play a part. Um, and as you said, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of articles and lists. Yeah. Um, where would, I wonder, what are some of those things that have been really good for you um, to learn from and, and be inspired by? And, um, and maybe where would you encourage people? Like what could someone's first couple steps be? Um. Well, something that Patrice Cullors, who's one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, started doing a couple days ago is a daily di digest on her Instagram feed. So I think that's a really good place to start every day because she is really, I mean, I have, she's like really doing God's work. And, it, and all of her work is informed by her own experience growing up in Los Angeles and having to deal with, you know, what we, what we all deal with. So um, she started doing this daily digest, which I think is is really, really impactful because she just kind of breaks it down and she's talking about where we are today because everything is happening so fast. So I would do that. Um, I would her name again? Out, uh, Patrice Colors. Um, I think her handle is at Osop Patrice um, on, on Instagram. And... Um, so there's that. Um, and then also just, you know, fo follow all of the, the co-founders of Black Lives Matter because they have, they're posting information every day and they're posting information about organized demonstrations that are happening throughout different states um, and get engaged with your local Black Lives Matter um, community because they're all over. And, um, and then, um, also with like, uh, with regard to legal stuff, I think, you know, staying in tune with the ACLU and the legal work that they're doing around, around all of this. Um, what else? Um, follow me. <laughs> yeah, I support that. Um, and then also, um, I posted something yesterday on my feed, which is, um, a podcast called Justice in America, which is um, co-hosted by a woman named Josie Duffy Rice. And she's, I think, the president of The Appeal, which is, oh yeah, I would say um, subscribe to The Appeal, which is, um, they have a daily newsletter just talking about what's going on all over the country in terms of uh, criminal justice reform and um, on the legal side, things that have happened that need attention, things like that. Um, 
and then listen to this incredible podcast that they have because the, they're both lawyers and um, they talk about what it really is like kind of on the ground, like in the, in the courtrooms, in the DA's offices, how the, how the decisions get made, sentencing decisions, um, mm. things like that. So um, I would say listen, listen to these incredible podcasts. Um, the one I posted yesterday was uh, with a woman named Mariam Kaba, and she's a, um, she's a prison abolitionist. She is movement, and she talks about what that really means. And, and what it would look like and what it would require for us to, to, to get to that point. Um, so just a, those are a couple things, but again, whatever moves you, whatever makes sense to you, I would say just, you know, yeah. stay, stay, stay aware of what's going on, stay awake and stay in the fight, even though you may get tired because everyone's really tired, but we have to do this. Yeah. Do you see George's question? I'm curious. I've seen a bunch of lists floating around, so I know the information's out there, but I wonder if you know of a couple books that you might recommend. Um, George, Georgia, Georgina. Yeah. Um, this may seem weird, but I would, I would ask you, are you black? Are you white? How do you identify? And I think that informs maybe some of the books you should read. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, and it also depends on like what your taste is. If you if you're you know wanting to really go back, I think I think reading some of the stuff from history, like even reading James Baldwin, is a really good place to start. Um, but there are some new books that just talk about um, kind of more our more contemporary issues, like uh, the new Jim Crow. Um, I think I just, I was on a Zoom and they said that this book, White Fragility, is like mm -hmm. the number one book right now being sold on Amazon. Um, I own that book. I have not read it yet, I have to admit. Um, uh, what else? There's, um, oh God, like I said, it would be helpful to know where, how you identify, mm -hmm. but um, and maybe I can post some more after this. After I finish eating my oatmeal and my brain is working. <laughs> more more smoothly no well, you've been great um as your friend i'm i'm really proud of you i keep being inspired by you and learning from you um so th th thanks for spending a half hour with us and um yeah you're you're awesome so thanks for for jumping back into the conversation thanks for having me back absolutely i'll talk to you soon enjoy your oatmeal thank you <laughs> okay bye megalyn <laughs> How do I go off? Oh, uh, I will remove you. Oh, remove me. <laughs> um, please follow Megalyn if you don't already. She has a cool handle. It's at Megalyn. And um, thank you to Georgia for the question. And we are going to jump over to Carlos Whitaker. We're going to bring him on. I see him. And Carlos is joining us now. Gracie's being relatively behaved. Oh, my man. Hey, buddy. Whenever I do a haircut, I, I feel like I look more like you. More, you're getting close. More and more, more and more. My I'm, trying to fix, I'm trying to fix this thing, hold on. Technical difficulties, perfect. How are you doing? I am tired. I am I, I'm tired, but I'm so glad to be talking to a friend. I've been talking to a bunch of strangers for the last 24 hours. And so it's good to be talking to you, buddy. So I'll, I'll set the stage a little bit and then I'll let yeah. you fill it in if that's okay. Yeah. So if, yeah. if for some reason you don't already follow Carlos, um, you shared, was it two days ago now, your first ever conversation um, with a neighbor, next door neighbor, neighbor. Across the street neighbor. Across the street neighbor, who is a white man in his 70s, right? Yep, yep. And you guys have lived across from each other for a few years? Four years. But this was your first real conversation. Ever conversation. Not, not even like make-believe or real. 
And um, I'm going to kick it to you. Can you tell us what you talked about and what happened next? Yeah, you know, um, it was crazy. I, you know, I'll just put a little backstory, you know, moved into this. We live in white suburban middle class Tennessee in the South. And um, there's, oh, I hear you, Maisie. Crazy <laughs> stuff, please. <laughs> and so I, um, there's a, I'm, I've tried, you know, there's neighbors that some neighbors are nice. Some neighbors, it's not that they're not nice. They just don't talk, you know? And so, you know, we, we've, we're friends with a lot of our neighbors, but this one individual neighbor, like, man, I've tried. I've tried, I tried for four straight years to get something out of him. I mean, like I, I do every, I mean, he saw me and heard me. I was like, Hey, good morning. Wouldn't even give me time of day. And um, so, you know, I built a story in my head as this white Southern aged, a little older, 70 something years old with his American flag um, lives by himself. Um, it's, I, I built up the narrative that he didn't like me because I'm black and um there's good reason for me to build up that that narrative as well. So don't, you know, I get a bunch of people going like, well, I don't understand why an American flag would make you not think, and I'm like, well, it's, sure. um, let's, just, let's just call a spade a spade. It, it, it's been weaponized and, and um, so anyway, that, that's what I did. And then, so all that to say, it led up to two days ago and I'm, he's got two little white bunnies in his front yard. Uh, <laughs> and, I see him walk out of his front door with a can of paint and a paintbrush. And I'm like, what's he doing? Like, what's he going to paint in his yard? And he kneels down in front of those bunnies and he just starts to paint the big bunny black. And I was like, he's painting a, and, I, and so then I was like, I'm going to wait to see if he paints the other one. He just painted one, picks up the paint bucket, walks back into his house, closes the door. And I look at Heather and I'm like, my wife, and I'm like, what is that? So immediately in my head, I started thinking, well, it must be some sort of like World War II remembrance uh, day where he's got to like, you know, like honor his fallen soldiers. Like nothing in my brain was letting me go to the fact that maybe, just maybe, homeboy across the street was like, cared about me. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I, I just kind of let it process and let it sink for a couple hours overnight. And I'm like, I just, if I see him, I got to ask him. So that's where the video started. I hit record because I wanted to show the conversation to my wife. That's literally why I recorded it. Um, and I walked over there and I, you can kind of hear me nervous in my voice. I'm like, hey neighbor. And, uh, and he kind of look, looks at me and I walk over and I, I said, you know what? This is the first conversation I've ever had with you. <laughs> it was so awkward. And he sticks out his hand. He's like, my name's James Martin. I've lived here, I've lived here since 1964, you know, and, um, or 57. And, I said, hey, I just got a question. Why'd you paint the bunny black? And he paused, he thought about it. I could tell that he was like really thinking about like what he, he, first of all, I've never seen another human being. The man lives by himself, never seen another human being there, never seen him talk to anybody else. So he's really having to think about what he's gonna tell his black neighbor. And he just said, I just looked at what's happening in America and with the political climate and what's happening with race and all the news. And I just figured this was a nice soft way of me saying what, declaring what I believed to my neighbors. And mm. I, bro, they, I was undone. Like I was, I started crying. I was laughing, but crying. And he saw me and he was uncomfortable. He's like, oh my gosh, why is this guy crying? Um, you know, and then Jamie, well, the cool thing was, was that I actually, I think the part that, that, that people may be missing in the video that, they may be missing, but they're not missing in their emotions because they're feeling it, is that I felt the need to apologize to him. Like, I apologized to him. Uh, I said, I'm sorry for anything, any way I've ever thought about you. And I feel like that forgiveness was so key um, in, in propelling, you know, it, it was awkward for him for me to apologize. He didn't know what to say. He was like, ah. Uh. You know, and then, it, you know, he told some stories about growing up in the segregated South and how he had a white servant uh, housekeeper and he loved a, her like one of his parents. A black servant housekeeper. Yeah, I'm sorry, a black, black, yeah. black, a, bl a black servant housekeeper, and how he he loved her as one of, like, like one of his parents. And um, yeah, it was it was it, it was just cool to hear his history. He's like I, he never went to school with any black people, um, and yeah, he just was so sincere, you know. And then uh, honestly, also once I got over there, I was ten seconds in the conversation, and I realized this guy's just shy. Like yeah. I'm like judging him, 
it has nothing to do with with like he's just shy he doesn't he's kind of looking down the whole time you know he's not a people person so man i i uh it was it was pretty cool all that to say when the when it was over i said hey i'll just be honest with you i've been recording this conversation because i want to show this to my wife but what are the chances i can like put this on my instagram he's like oh he said uh my tv still has an antenna i don't have a computer and my phone's still attached to my wall <laughs> he said so i don't know what you're talking about but uh i said that's fine so that, you know then i i i I knew how powerful the conversation was before I uploaded the video, Jamie. And I knew that people were going to be touched. I didn't know that as of now, 1.7 million people would have uh, kind of been touched by the video. And uh, it's been cool to watch it, you know, do what it do what I hoped it was going to do and continue the conversation on race in a more hopeful way. Not that I'm going to maybe lessen the intensity of what I'm going to say in the future with yeah, I'm, I'm sure the 22,000 people that started following me on Instagram in a week, a few of those will probably leave because I'll probably bother them uh, because I'm not going to back off of the harder things. Although yeah. this was a hopeful thing, there still needs to be hard conversations. So, um, yeah, man, it was it was cool. And I'm, I'm floored at the reaction. And, and so what, we, what is your name? I know I, um, you've talked to Good Morning America, right? Uh, well, I talked to... It's weird with TV, like there's production companies that own things that do the stories and then they send them out to. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've talked to a whole bunch of people. And so like, already we were on 57 stations this morning and stuff, but we have talked to specifically um, Access Hollywood. So Mario, is that Mario Lopez? That's Mario Lopez. So now I'll, I will say we were not interviewed by Mario Lopez, uh, but hopefully Mario Lopez will say my name. And if he says my name, then my, my wife will for sure um i don't know maybe she'll just imagine i am him so wait what does your neighbor make of of all of this you know it's so funny I, I i posted a picture of my instagram yesterday while we were being interviewed i brought him over to my house i had all my lights up and the camera you know and uh, all my stuff and he's like you know and he's just sitting there talk looking he's like so wait where do i talk who do i talk to and he's talking to me. <laughs> and um and heather took a picture and i put it up on my instagram and i said man all james wants to do is be retired uh like like what what's beautiful about this story is that he did not paint the bunny to put it on Instagram. Like, yeah. wh whereas I feel like a lot of people, they're going to Black Lives Matter marches so that they can get a picture of them holding a, a, a sign and put on their Instagram. That's not why he did it. So just imagine that pure of a human being uh, being inundated by, by me and all my antics. So he's, you know, he's, he just wants to be retired, man. Like he's like, and, and he was true. Like I, I went into his house yesterday for the first time. I've never been in there. Um, and he's got a TV. He doesn't have cable. There's literally like, like in the eighties, an antenna sticking up from the top of the TV with like aluminum foil on it. And I'm like, bro, this is amazing. You know? And so I said, well, are you going to record um, the news segment that we're on? He's like, Oh, I don't, I can't record things. He said, I can't record things. My VCR is broken. And I was like, <laughs> of course so uh yeah man it it's it's been the most unlikely of moments but then again not you know yeah so um i want to remind people watching if you have a question for carlos we'd love to hear from you you can submit there's a question mark box at the bottom yeah um i'm gonna ask a loaded question oh geez. do you do you do you imagine that part of why the video has resonated in the way that it has is we're all trying to figure out how to live this out. Like we, we can figure out how to retweet and add to our story. We could participate in a protest, but what you did was something real and practical um, that, that I think just hits home with so many people. Do you feel like that's part of what people are holding on to? Yeah, that was not loaded. I thought it was. I thought you were going to ask me something else. Like that. That was the. If that's loaded from Jamie, then I, I guess I, I just meant I'm going to answer the question, but phrase it as a question. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I uh, yes, I think people are. It's it's time now. Okay, I mean the the marches have have gone away. Like like there there's there's a couple things. Something's happening in Seattle, but it's not like it was. Um, and so people are sitting in that uncomfortable space now of now what? Yeah. Like, like now what do I do? Like, 
do I keep talking about it on social media? Because people are really tired about me talking about this on social media. And I'm talking to myself, right? Um, you know, I'm still getting DMs every day from people that are like, hey, when can we get the, the, the old Carlos back? When, when can we get the, you know, the, the Carlos that is going to fix his lawnmower and have fun with that and like all that, you know, um, and I, I don't you, know. Is that offensive to you? Yes, because yeah. why that's offensive to me is like, oh, so, so Carlos, again, people would say that they don't see me as black because they don't see color. That's a whole other conversation, but I will call myself black uh, and out loud because I, 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 I don't get to leave that existence. Whereas other people don't get, don't have the opportunity or privilege to see me. They can see me however they want, but I still have to live in the blackness yeah. of who I am. All that to say, this may sound offensive to some people. So people may unfollow me when I say this, but what I, when I, when people say that, I'm like, oh, so like you're the black guy you follow on Instagram can entertain you, but he can't educate you. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how, that's how offend, offended I am when people say that. It's like, can you just get back to the Robins? Can you just get back to your family travel trips? Can you just get back to all the fun things that I love to watch you do? And I'm like, no, not right now. I'm actually not afforded the opportunity to go back to that because right now, while the iron's hot, like I've got, I mean, we've got, we have the opportunity to change something. Yeah. My black dad with, you know, uh, who immigrated as a black Hispanic uh, Afro-Latino from Colón, Panama in 1950 something with a $20 cash and a shoe shine kit told me the other day that he sees, he said, we have the opportunity to win. Like, like he actually sees that this is, this is as, as important as it was in the civil rights movement. He couldn't drink out of the same water fountain that other people could drink out of. And he's telling me that he's equating what he's feeling is happening in our country right now with that point in time. So to those who may be asking me, when are you going to get back to the baby Robins? Um, my question is, is this where, is that the question you want to be asking a black man, when you look back in 50 years and we're all 90 years old, 80 years old or whatever, is that the side of history that you're going to want to be on? Yeah. So um, it's a it's a defining time. And and I don't even know why I started ranting about that. No, so no, no. It makes that's sense. Where we are. Um, so I know you're getting your conversation with your neighbor and rightfully so. It's getting a lot of attention. But I wanted to kind of zoom out. Same question I asked Megalyn, but just what the last three weeks have been like for you, what you've felt, what you've processed, how kind of how you've spent the time yeah. um, beyond beyond this conversation with your neighbor. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been hard, man. It has been hard. It's been, I, I, I think honestly, all of, even before the, my neighbor, things were kind of getting crazy on my, on my feed just because I was having conversations I've never had before with people that follow me. And so I, man, I got, I did get so tired of being like the educator of being like, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a black guy who has a lot of white people that follow me. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. That's who I've been pouring into. That's whose conferences I've been speaking at. That's who reads my books. Like I know who my, my base is. Like I'm not, I'm not a dummy. So, but I think I didn't, I didn't realize how exhausted I would be by trying to educate my platform. Mm -hmm. And I think I've done it in a very graceful manner. I think I've done it in a very respectful manner. I think I've done it in a very safe place. And I hope, hopefully my followers that follow me have felt very safe in the way I've approached this conversation. But let me tell you, just because I'm safe doesn't mean that I'm not going to be blunt. And I, I feel like, you know, I've gotten a lot more blunt over the last mm -hmm. three weeks. Somebody had, uh, reached out to me today and they're like, Hey, I feel like you answered my, um, my question in your comments with a little bit of sarcasm is what they said. And I was like, yeah, I probably did. I, yeah. And that's just not like you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? That, that is like <laughs> the fact that I was so kind in my sarcasm is like the opposite of what, like everything inside of me wanted to rush yeah. out and say. So that was kind Carlos, you know? Um, and so like, yeah, you know, it's, it's tiring, but I do feel a specific call. I feel like very specific call because again, another beautiful thing about my platform is, is the people that follow me, I have, I'd say, I'd say it's probably 50, 50 
left leaning and right leaning. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've got, I've got them all. I've got the whole spectrum of of people that follow me. And so, but they also know that I'm, I don't, like I don't hide what I believe, but mm -hmm. I say it in a way that's going to be respectful to somebody that doesn't believe the way I believe. And so, you know, that just takes extra work. I think you know, um, it doesn't take extra work to be hateful. It takes extra work to be grace filled. It does. And there's a lot of hateful rhetoric. There's a lot of people that are just like, gonna like rant and tell you why you're wrong. And, and that would be so easy. And I don't think I would be as exhausted if I did that. But I think I'm, I'm exhausted because I'm trying to choose to have some humanity in this whole conversation. Um, I wanna ask about mental health and self care. I know that's something you've been open about for years and something we've talked about, but in the midst of a really unique time in history and in our lives, um, what has, or have you been able to prioritize your own mental health and your own self care in recent weeks? Yeah, no, you know, not, it, it's looked different in recent weeks because uh, I've known that today was going to come. I've known that there was going to be a day when the, the news cycle wasn't about protests uh, wasn't about so I knew that there was only a short amount of time that I had to be on I had to be answering as many Instagram questions as I could uh, to, uh, many conversations about race all that to say like I Jamie I did feel my mental health suffering um, in ways that I hadn't felt it suffering in years to be honest with you like I I was like whoa actually I need I need to take a break I need to disappear I need to get off my phone I need to you know, so I, I've done, I, I have specifically in the last two weeks done those things. We went on vacation um, two weeks ago or a week ago. You know, I, I took a whole day. I didn't take my phone, just went fishing. I've been fishing a lot, um, you know, the last, the last couple of weeks. I've been uh, here in Nashville. I go out to a local river and I get on my boat and I fish. And that stuff's super, super important. You know, if, if, if you're not taking care of your mental health, then it's, you're not going to be worth anything to anybody. Um, and again, I, you know, I'm not just saying I'm not going to be worth anything to my Instagram followers. I'm talking about the people that are upstairs, my family, like my yeah. wife and kids. Um, and so, you know, I've got to be strong for them. I've got to be healthy for them. Not really strong. Strong is the wrong word. I, I, I've got to be healthy for them mentally and, um, and spiritually. And so I'm, um, I'm doing what I can. I'm not ingesting as much as I was the first two weeks of this stuff. But um, it's very important. Very important. You cool if we take a couple questions? Let's take a couple questions. Someone just said hi, which is an easy one. We would say hi back. Um, let's see. If you guys have a question for Carlos, please submit. We would love to hear from you. There's a little question mark box at the bottom. Um, let's see. This is driving me. I'm going to fix the light here real quick. OK. What do you think? Oh, oh Meg Megalyn has come back to us with an answer. Somebody asked about book recommendations. Um, I still struggle with this. Carlos, you might know the name. I've only read the name. Oh, no, no, no. Don't even try me. Um, but there it is. You can read it. Between the World and <clears throat> Me. I need to learn. I read the name all the time, and I don't know how to say it. Look at Meglin. Meglin's here. awesome. Um, so we're going to come back to questions from these folks. But I, same question I asked her. Um, do you feel hopeful in the midst of all of this? I do. I feel, I actually surprisingly feel more hopeful than I did a month ago. I, I feel, you know, in the midst of us, we're about to go into an election season. I actually have I some hope. Hey, hey, right. I, no, it's okay. I actually have some hope that that people are coming to are coming to their senses and are going to be more human than they maybe ever have. And that may be an asinine statement that may be crazy for me to believe that. But I believe that people maybe are actually tired of of all of the hate, all of mm -hmm. the, you know, I think people are just exhausted by it. It's so exhausting. Um, and I think people are, are ready for for hope. You know, I think people are ready for um, people that, that are going, you know, to be led um, by people that are, that are going to breathe hope, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and when I say led, I'm not just, just talking about like pres presidents. I'm talking about like 
community leaders and schools. And, you know, I, I just think that even my family who maybe on Facebook that's arguing with me all the time or that not arguing with me, but saying things that like are just, they, they, every other day, it's just like my old friends from high school or from, you know, on Facebook are just saying things just to provoke people like me. I feel, I see even them lessening that because I feel like they're probably like, man, I'm tired of being an a-hole, you know, like I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of always making people mad. I just feel like people are, are ready to, um, to, to feel some semblance of hope, man. Like, yeah. So yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. I just, I actually thought of a version of this. Have you seen a change in the conversations you've been having with your kids? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, my kids, um, how my old, kids, will you tell people how old they are? Yeah. My kid, I got an 18 year old and she's this shade. I got a, a 16 year old and she's this shade. And then I got, I got a, I got a four, 13 year old and he's like this shade. And so I've got like the United colors of Benetton <laughs> and skin tones in my house. The conversation has really been about these two kids, Sohela and Sayana. Now, do I look at them as skin tones? No. But have, has the conversation suddenly been, hey, guess what? Your sister, your sister is going to experience a completely different set of rules in her life in this country than you are. You have the same mom and dad. You came out different shades. One of you has privilege. One of you doesn't have as much privilege. Mm -hmm. So does this person have privilege? Yeah. They live in an upper middle class neighborhood in, in Nashville, Tennessee. But is, is she going to be as privileged as this one? No. And so, yeah, man, that's, those are the conversations that, that, I've been, that we've been having is with our kids. Like, it's been, um, it's been really cool. And then Lasaya, my youngest, he's Korean. Yeah. So the conversations I've been having with him is, you know, he, I mean, dude, he, he was telling me at church, at church, at freaking church, one of the kids in his, you know, kids' church class called him flat face, right? Like, in front of the whole, while he was like, like in front of the whole group, you know, and they're like, hey, flat face, you know, and I'm like, you know, my, my son is experiencing racism just as much as I experience racism. It's not, if not more. And so, um, man, yeah, so I, I was able to talk to him about that. So um, there's lots of, lots of conversations about, about race. I don't know if they've necessarily changed, but I definitely think they've been heightened. So, yeah. Let's see if we can get to another one. How, we just got a couple minutes. I might try to keep you for longer if that's okay, but how can we best support our black friends and neighbors during this time? Man, um, I would tell you to not just say, hey, how's it, how's it going? How are you feeling? You know, like not, not do that more. Go to them if there's any bias that's been inside of you at all. Not towards them, but towards people like them. Mm -hmm. Apologize to them. Uh, like literally call them, walk across the street, get in your car, whatever social distancing thing you're doing and let them know that you apologize for that and that you're breaking an agreement with that bias. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be, you know, the, number one, super helpful. I think another way that you can support your black friends and neighbors during this time is, is to help change the hearts of people that don't, you know, that don't see the world as you do now. Um, and, and know that it's not going to be overnight. These conversations with your friends and family um, that are racist, you know, um, it, it's not going to happen overnight. But it's, if you can just don't give up. I mean, if you, if you want to best support your black neighbors, don't give up. Just, I know we're tired. Look at me. I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about this stuff. Um, but I'm not going to stop because we're not there yet. And so you can't stop either. Imagine the... Uh, and then another thing, I'm, I'm going to add no, all kinds of things to this answer. But another thing, if you're if you're white is to that can really help support your black friends is to lower your fragility, lower the the sensitivity to being told that maybe you're doing something wrong. OK, um, the, whatever fragility you're feeling in this time or weariness that you're feeling like, man, I'm so this has been so much work to like um, stand up for racial in, injustice for the last three weeks, like I'm exhausted. Now take that and imagine my whole life, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so um, just, you know, oh, I mean, I, I don't know the right way to say this, but 
Um, you're stronger than you think you are. Oh, we're, is it about to die? Yeah. Do you mind joining us for a few more minutes? I'll hop back. I'll hop back on. Okay. okay. We're gonna end this, you guys, and we're gonna come right back on. Sorry, that took a minute. Oh, we are back for part two. We're gonna bring Carlos back on just for a few more minutes. Just waiting for his name. I see him. Thank you guys for coming back. Carlos is joining us now. Hey, man. Hey, buddy. Thank you for for joining us. Did did you get to finish that thought? I'm sorry. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I think I was talking about like a way that you can support your black neighbors is to maybe lessen your um, your your fragility meter. Like yeah. like I don't want to say toughen up because that's that's such the wrong thing to say. Um, but if you can if you can remove whatever grossness that that sounds like, just just know that that um, you, the skin needs to be a little thicker as a white. I, I know it does as a white person that had that. You don't talk about this stuff. This isn't stuff that you've had to talk about. And so I know it's it's hard, um, but I think it's gonna help your black brothers and sisters if they see, you know, I, I, got, I had a phone call from a pastor friend of mine um, who, who took a picture of him and his family at, at a really large church, took a picture of him and his family at a Black Lives Matter um, uh, protest with a sign that says Black Lives Matter. And bro, he's getting destroyed. He's getting pummeled. He's getting, you know, and I just told him, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you um, for go and for not taking it down, for not taking the post down when, you know what, you could have made it all go away because, you know, I can't make it go away for me. So thank you for not making it go away for you. So I think that's what I'm saying when I'm saying kind of yeah. uh, get past the get past the frailness of. No, that makes sense. I uh, want to remind you guys. So when we jumped back on, when we switched over, we lost all your all wonderful the questions. questions. If you guys have so, questions, ask them. Cause yeah, if you have a question, um, please submit. Uh, there's a question mark box at the bottom. I wanted to ask kind of how you choose your battles, like how you, how you decide. I mean, and I know there's all sorts of battles right now, whether it's social media or just how we choose to spend our time, who you respond to in the comments or the DMs. I think we can all relate to navigating uh, or maybe we, a lot of us can relate to navigating conflict or disagreement, um, people that we know see the world differently. And I, I wonder if you would have some advice kind of based on the conversations you pick and choose right now. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, I have to every day. Like I, I get to pick and choose conversations that I'm gonna lean into. Um, and right now, I, I think I was, I, I wrote a book three years ago called Kill the Spider. And I'm so grateful that I wrote that book because I understand that every everyone that is shouting and screaming um, is in pain. There, there's, there's some pain point. So whether that's somebody that agrees with me or doesn't agree with me, there's a pain point that is causing the, the action. And so like every person I talk to or I have a conversation with, I'm viewing them as a wounded, hurting person, okay? From the, the most vitriol that is spewed at me, I'm like, the higher the vitriol that spewed, the more I'm like, oh man, they are hurting. Like, I feel so bad for them. And, um, and so I think what I do is, I kind of try to pass her in the comment sections a little bit. Like, I'm like, I try to be graceful. And then I'm like, hey, um, hit me up in my DMs. Now, this is something that I've been doing in my DMs that, um, I, I'm trying to tell a lot of my friends that are getting a lot of hate um, in their DMs, which I, I was getting a lot at the beginning when I was talking about this stuff. I still am, but not as much. Um, I think they've all unfollowed me. But um, whenever somebody like goes off of me like, raw, you're starting a race war, raw, you know, um, I always, instead of typing back to them, I just open the camera and I hit record on a video. Wow. And I, I say, hey, I, I, this is exactly what I do. I need you to look at me in my eyes. I love you. I'm for you. I, I need you to, before we finish this conversation. So just know that, that I'm not, I'm not trying to make you feel less. I'm not trying to make you, and bro, they're not expecting a video. They pop it open and they, all of a sudden they see me going like, Hey, I see you. Like, I, I see your pain. Like I see it, bro. It every single time, like, 
like the 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 vitriol goes away, the venom goes away, and now we're having a conversation, human to human. Uh, so a lot of times I'll, I'm telling people, hey, go m hit me up in my DMs, and then they go, Rawr, and then I show them a video, and then I'll three times so far I've gotten videos of them crying back, like, I'm so sorry, you know, because we're just missing that. We're missing the human to human piece. Um, so that's what I would recommend for people that are having hard conversations online, trying to like convince people, do it, do it with video, do it with, you know, if you can face to face, uh, you're gonna get a lot farther faster. Um, we'll get to a couple more questions from these folks, if that's okay. But I wonder, and I asked Megalyn, who, who have you been looking to? Who, who's been inspiring you? Who's been informing you in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, uh, Brit Brittany Packnett. Um, so, I mean, Brit Brittany, when I spoke and sang at the White House in 2014, she was working for President Obama and I, I met her there that day. Uh, I'll never forget, like she was just fire, man. Like she was, you know, she was coordinating everything. And, and then since then to see her kind of become an activist, um, we have the same belief system. She's an activist that isn't like, what I love about her, she's just not, she, she's not, yeah, no, it's okay. She's, she's, she's angry, she's righteously angry, but it's not like, it's not like hateful angry. You know what I'm saying? There's just, there's just a difference. Um, there's a righteous anger as opposed to unrighteous anger. So I, Gracie, <laughs> Gracie, speaking of anger. Gracie, hey, stop. We're doing television. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. I, I don't care. I mean, I can keep talking. Um, she, uh, someone said she's brilliant and I would agree with that. Yes. I tweeted that, sh that she should be president last week. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, and so go follow her, go follow all, all that she does. She's amazing. And then um, also um, Latasha Morrison. She, what I love about Latasha is she's, she's been doing this work for decades. Right, she's been doing the work of, of racial reconciliation for a long time. De she's not decades, she, Latasha. You ain't that old, but but you know what I'm saying, like longer than a decade. And you know what's so funny is that is that people will trust a a mouthpiece spitting out statistics and facts that they just Googled or gone to the the internet to find, and then they will base their entire viewpoint of racism in America based on a few. Um, Googled facts, as opposed to going to someone like Latasha, who's got the heart of gold, that has been, I'm talking about her team has done years of research on this stuff, years of research on what's been happening. I, and um, she's got a book called Be the Bridge. Um, I'm actually going to do, do a fundraiser for her that I was talking to her about yesterday with the t-shirt about the black money. So I'm pretty excited about that. But she's been doing work for a long time. And so don't find people that fit your, uh, that, that help fit your, you know, the, the facts that you want to hear to make you feel better about your racial bias. Um, go look for someone like Latasha, who has been doing the work for a long time. So I say Brittany, I say Latasha, and, I'm, I'm, and those are two women. And so, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and say right now, I believe that, that black women are the ones that are leading, um, leading the, this right now, leading the, the conversation, leading everything. And so, you know, give it up for the sisters. Yeah. How has this affected your relationships with your white friends, if it has? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, Morrison, Latasha Morrison is her name. Um, at Latasha Morrison. Yep, somebody can put it in here. So I think with my white friends, it's only strengthened my, my relationship with them. I think if they were white kind of friends, then, uh, or may, then they weren't really friends, you know? And so there's definitely been a few that, um, have disappeared or gone away. But most of them, most of them are just grateful that I'm willing to have the hard conversation with them. And I'm actually grateful to have the hard conversation with them. I've had more 
hard conversations with white friends of mine that completely disagree politically with me, that com but I love them with everything inside of me. Um, there, there's a friend of mine who we're completely different on the like political ends of the spectrum, but he lo I know he loves me. We've had the most incredible Marco Polo conversations. And Marco Polo is an app where you can just talk back and forth that I tried to get Jamie on. I don't know if you ever got on it. But, um, but what's cool about it, it's not like, it's not like a, a real-time conversation. It's like a walkie-talkie, but with video. Yeah. And so he talks for 20 minutes, and I'm listening to him or whatever. And then whenever I'm ready, I talk back. And we've, man, we've come to actually, we've come closer because of this. Wow. So, you know, even my friends that lean differently politically than me, again, this isn't a political issue. This is a human issue. So, um, yeah, I, I think that it's, I think it's brought, um, brought a lot of my friends closer to me. Oh, there he is. Oh, wait, hold on. I was... What happened? Wait, he's, he's in the chat. <laughs> that is so funny. I always tell, I always tell him that I talk about him on these things and I talk about him live. And so that I use him as an example as a friend that believes <laughs> differently politically than me and on these things. And he just saw, he just saw it. That's so funny. Oh, if you guys just got the app, that's good. Oh, well, Matt has added himself. It's Matt Albee. And there he is right here. And another, another great, great conversation I have with Matt. And Matt is like my, um, my conservative, white, upper middle class police, a law enforcement friend from La uh, Los Angeles, California. We have the, gr I'm telling you guys, face-to-face -face conversation is way better than anything that you can type out. You know, don't try to have conversations with people in Facebook comment section, that's never gonna, that's never gonna work. Unity is gonna happen face to face, whether that be on Marco Polo or walking across the street. Do you have any ideas on how to have difficult conversations with family about this? I mean, you know, I put out a video, Jamie, that you and I talked about about a month ago, where I said, stop giving your 90 year old racist grandpa a pass mm. um because you know people are like well he's 90 and i'm like well guess what how about from 90 to 91 or 90 to 92 he lives an anti-racist life like that would be awesome yeah. you know so you know um i i think you have to again remember i may have touched this before that relationship is the most important thing please don't lose a relationship because when you lose a relationship you lose the ability to change somebody so I fight for the relationship. You know, there's people that are like, my church didn't, uh, they haven't said anything about, about this from the pulpit, and I'm going to leave. And I'm like, well, if you leave, then who's going to talk to them about it? If you leave, who's going to be the one that's going to change it? So the same thing with the relationship. Don't let the relationships go sideways. Make sure that you're able to, um, to still stay there and just know that it's just small presses, small press, small steps, small steps, and, and I think it'll go a long way. Um, I know you got something coming up, so I, I don't want to keep you any longer. But, uh, well, I, I'm lying because I'm going to ask you one more question. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I asked Megalyn this, but but maybe just one for someone who's who's going, hey, I'm I'm overwhelmed. This is new to me. I still don't really know where to start. I wonder if you could just share a couple thoughts with people. Um, you know, sometimes I think that, I, again, I'm just talking to to white people. Sometimes I think that that you can overthink things. Uh, that there's a little too much overthinking when it comes to this. Yeah, you know, that somebody sent me something about like, so well, should I, I don't want to offend anyone. It should it be African American, American African, should it be BIPOC or people of color? Should it be uh, Afro Latino? Or, and, and although like, I can understand why all of that stuff is important. In the grand scale of things, the thing that's more important is that you do something. Mm. So just start, like look inside of your heart. Like when you see something that you're like, that's not right, do something about it. And I guarantee you that black people are more concerned with you doing something than making a mistake as you're doing it. Mm. Um, and, and, and so, I, you know, again, I just, I'd much rather you, you fall down trying than not fall down at all. And uh, so just go after it. You know, I know that's not very specific, but I think it's specific for everybody inside of who they are. They know what they got to do. Like, they, they, I know that there's people watching this right now that were like, there's a protest on Saturday and I'm just sitting at home right now and I know I can go down there. I just don't, I don't know. Like, that's what I'm talking about. You people who like, you're having that battle inside your heart because you know that there's something you can do. So I'm just going to say, do it. Like, do it. Yeah. 
Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, man, thank you for for joining us again in the midst of a busy couple of days. Your book comes out next Tuesday, right? My book, my book comes out on Tuesday. Enter Wild, um, and and I think it can help a lot of people. You can pre-order right now um, at all the places: Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the places. So, um, please follow Carlos if you don't already. You will be informed. You will be challenged. You will be entertained. But you will not only be entertained. That's right. You will be as educated. We touched on. Um, and uh, then I just want to remind everyone uh, two things that I said at the very beginning, but we've created a list of mental health resources created for and from the black community, shared that last Tuesday. Um, if finances are a barrier, we would love for you to reach out or if you simply need help finding help, you can email findhelp at twaloha.com. Uh, so you can find more information there on our website. And then, so we shared that last Tuesday. And then last Thursday, we shared a list for people that are interested in learning about and participating in anti-racism. And so we've been able to share two really extensive lists. You did what I did. I did. I, that was, look, ever want to see what I'm looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I love the old Coke, the, or not Coke, clearly not Coke. Pepsi. Yeah, no, machine. Pepsi, Pepsi, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of information on our site. Uh, you'll find blogs, you'll find podcast episodes. Uh, you can search by your zip code. You can find mental health resources in your local community. Uh, so we want to invite you. Carlos, thank you so much. Thank you for- we Love you, man. Uh, thank you again. Thanks for being you. And I hope the rest of your day goes well. Love you, man. You love guys you, take care. Stay safe, stay healthy. We love you.